Hi, I'm Scott at ediblemusic.com. One thing to be found in common between professional mixing engineers and those of us who are getting started working in our home music studios is the realization that there's a lot that goes into mixing a song. The difference is that professional mixing engineers have devised ways to simplify their mixing workflow to distribute tasks among themselves and their assistants so that they can get the results that they need more efficiently. And this is something that you should be thinking about too as you develop your skills in the home music studio. You will also want to develop a more simplified workflow that will help you to work more quickly and more creatively. And one way to do this is by thinking about things in terms of hats. Mixing is one hat among many that you'll be wearing in the music studio. And the first stage is the composition, the recording, the production of the song, which leads eventually to the final stage of mastering, which prepares that completed song for release. But in between there, you'll be wearing different hats. When you're making the song, when you're composing it and producing it and recording it, limit your focus just to those practices until everything is in the song. Each stage prepares the song and the parts of the song as best as it can to make the next stage as easy as possible, as simple as possible. So if you do a really great job recording, then you might not have as much editing work to do, but you should focus on editing by itself before you get to mixing, because if you do a really good job editing, then your mixing will be that much easier as well. And it sort of flows forward all the way into the master. At the same time, each of these requires different ways of thinking about the song. So as you are recording, you might want to envision what that final pro product will be of the final version of the song and try to position your microphones in ways that will reflect how it will sound in that final version. And similarly with your edits, if you want to remove things or have to clean things up in order to get those program elements into position for the mix to be as successful as possible, then that will help the mix to be more simplified and faster, which will then help the mastering process to be much easier as well. So if you think about dividing things out, these four stages, the composition slash recording slash production stage, the editing stage, the mixing stage, and then the mastering stage, you'll be able to think about things in terms of preparation so that it moves through this process nice and efficiently. If you wear these different hats, one for recording and production, one for editing, another for mixing, and finally for mastering, then you'll find that you can restrict your focus only to the tasks at hand that you need to be completing right now. And another thing though is that within each of these big four hats are a bunch of littler hats. So when you're recording and producing, you want to work in a particular order. Same with when you're editing. And when you're mixing, you want to work in a particular order as well. That helps to prepare the mix for the master. And this is something that I show you how to do in the five day foundation learning series that I designed. It walks you through these stages and you can mix along with these instructions or these steps that I show you how to do by using EQ and balancing to start, which prepares the song for compression, which then prepares it for effects like saturation and delay and reverb. Use that, get it at ediblemusic.com slash five days. It will help out your workflow and it will also insist that you focus only on these tasks as they go so that you can move efficiently forward in a simpler way. And this is something that you can apply to yourself as well by adopting and simplifying your workflow and mixing practice. And I'm speaking especially to you if it takes you more than one session to complete a mix, if it takes you a few different sessions. The problem that can happen is that in one session, you might be noodling around a little bit, but you'll find that your results are good. The mix is sounding good. However, it's not closer to completion. So you stop the session because you are feeling good about it. You've got that nice little rush of success, but the mix actually hasn't moved further. It's more your brain is kind of tricking you into stopping working because you feel as though you've accomplished 
what you need to do, but the mix is still not done. So if you allow yourself to resist that and to simply work in the way that I'm suggesting to break things down, then you can focus only on what you need to be focusing on right now. And one way to do that is to make lists for yourself. Every time you finish a session, make a list of three to five things that you need to accomplish in the next session. So if you've finished up mixing the drums and you're moving on to bass, put the bass at the top of that list so that you don't start noodling around on the drums again once you open the mix back up. You can keep on pushing forward because you'll have this to-do list that will be prepared for you and that will sharpen your focus to the tasks at hand. And you do that after every session and before you know it, your song will be done and you won't have the worry of being distracted by all the little things that can carry you away from the progress that needs to be made in the mix. So, so far we've got wearing some hats and some hats within hats and keeping organized by identifying what you need to accomplish in each session that you're working on the song. By having a to-do list, you won't be distracted by anything else and it will help you to move forward in a much simpler way. Now, it's also important to think about how to simplify things within the workstation itself. So if you can apply a template that you'll use every single time, select a couple of EQs, a couple of compressors, a couple of different saturators and so on that you'll use for every single mix, especially if you're just learning how to use each of these. It's a great idea to, for now at least, just select a couple so that you can get really familiar with the practice of EQing and the practice of compression. And then once you've mastered these select few that you've chosen, and I recommend just choosing the default ones that are included in your workstation, but once you've really gotten a handle on those, then the exploration of new plugins, third-party plugins that you want, might want to buy will be much more creative because you've got those hard skills down and then you can just explore the ways that they can be used as tools that can add some nice flair and some nice taste to your mixes. But narrow your focus to a select group of processing and effects so that your use of them will not be distracting from the, pro from the progress that you need to be able to make. Similarly, if you can apply a template that has all of the same routing so that you know where each recorded track will go, what direction it's going to end up in at the master, if you have buses and groups and different send and return channels, then every time you start mixing a new song, you can have things color-coded and labeled and you know where to go and your brain won't be distracted by having to search around and find where things are and where they're leading to. So if you organize your sessions, you organize yourself and you organize your hats, then you'll have a much better way of simplifying your workflow and making progress not only in your skills development, but also in the number of songs that you'll finish. It'll be a great benefit to your work. Try it out.